Over the past few weeks, I've put out three videos that are, in my opinion, highlighting some of the most important advanced statistics in the game. In today's video, we're going to hop onto the other side of the spectrum to follow up on some of our lesser known statistics that have been born in the Sabermetrics era. My personal favorite is the last one, so be sure to stick around until the end of today's video. Let's jump into it. To begin with, let's cover a very new and very interesting statistic that I found relating to a hitter's performance. It has to do with barrels, which we've covered briefly on the channel before, but let's describe exactly how we define a barrel. A barrel is a ball that must have an exit velocity above 98 miles per hour, between a certain range of changing launch angles. For the minimum exit velocity, which is 98, your launch angle range is going to be between 26 and 30 degrees. As you increase in exit velocity, you also increase the range of your launch angles by one degree in each direction. So with an exit velocity of 99 miles per hour, your range would be 25 to 31 degrees, and at 100, it would be 26 to 32 degrees. Once your exit velo surpasses 100 miles per hour, the range grows by two or three each time, all the way up until you reach an 116 exit velocity, where your launch angle range has opened up from eight to 50 degrees. All right, so now that we have an understanding of what a barrel is, now we can jump into how we calculate this new undervalued statistic. In a previous video, we talked about WOBA, and we referred to it as the king of hitting statistics. But this new stat is here to challenge WOBA. Let me explain. Here's our formula for WOBA. If you're interested in my full analysis on this statistic, you can check out my video describing everything you need to know about this stat in the description down below. The issue with WOBA is the amount of variables you must put in in order to get a proper result. In comes our first undervalued statistic, WBA. This stands for Weighted Barrel Average. It is calculated very similarly to WOBA, but the equation is much, much friendlier. It may arguably be more accurate. The biggest difference between WBA and WOBA is that you no longer rely on singles, doubles, triples, and home runs as your variables. You instead input the number of barrels that this player has had. This both simplifies the equation, and it may even do a better job indicating the output that each player brings to the table, because not every hard hit ball actually lands for a hit. So that's it for our first statistic. Now let's move on to our next statistic regarding our pitcher's production. Our pitcher's undervalued statistic is more of a fun one. I spoke in my video on FIP that talking about wins and losses in the sabermetric community is somewhat of a low-hanging fruit. But what if I were to tell you that these numbers can actually be transformed into something useful? That's right, I was as surprised as you when I first came across this statistic. It's a stat that takes a pitcher's record and puts it on the same scale as one of our favorite New Age statistics, WAR. This statistic is called WLWR, and it stands for Win-Loss to War Ratio. It's calculated by taking the pitcher's wins less their losses, then adding their total runs allowed. You divide this number by the pitcher's total games played, multiplied by our WLWR constant, which happened to be 3.1 last year. And finally, you multiply all that by 10. You don't believe me? Let's take a look at a quick example. Last year, our war leader on the pitching side of the ball was Justin Verlander. His war was 7.8. If you look at the variables required, his record last year, runs allowed, the games he played in, and then input them into our WLWR formula, it calculates out to be 7.69. Pretty incredible, right? This somewhat meaningless statistic can be transformed into a number that is within about a tenth of what his cumulative war was last year. Now, I recognize that this statistic isn't necessarily beneficial in actually predicting or analyzing a player's performance, but I was impressed with the accuracy I found with this equation across the board and it may just be a fun one to play around with on your own. Lastly, we're going to tackle a statistic that applies to both hitters and pitchers' spring training performances. This is a statistic that actually translates spring training stats into something beneficial. Most of us stat geeks recognize that not all spring training stats are good indicators of the type of season that each athlete is going to have. However, this statistic claims to find a predictive value to spring training stats. It's called DLSTS over 162. As always, you can find links to learn more about all these equations down below. But our spring training stat is calculated by taking the player's spring training stats and multiplying it by zero. Happy April Fool's Day, guys. 
Did I fool any of you with these statistics? Let me know down in the comments when you started to catch on. Try sharing this video with a friend interested in baseball analytics and see if you can fool them too. I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.